just traded in our Hummer H3 after three years and around 30,000 miles. I've amassed enough footage to do a basic review of the pros and cons of this platform from an off-road and overlanding perspective. While there are plenty of sites that will give you opinions about the highway ride quality and cursory statements about the H3's off-road prowess, we are going to delve into the platform more deeply, starting with overall dimensions of the vehicle and then going right underneath to take a closer look at the drivetrain. In stock form, the off-road angles for the H3 are very good. The approach is 37.4 degrees with an open wheel configuration, offering more approach if you take obstacles at a slight angle. Departure is also very good at 34.7 with a breakover of 22.1. Adventure package models with rear locker have slightly improved angles. Wheelbase is a tad long at 111.9 and the track width checks in at 65 inches. The primary competitor to the H3 is the Jeep Wrangler Unlimited and Rubicon trim. The stock Rubicon has a class leading approach angle of 44.3, departure is 40.4 and a breakover of 25.4. The wheelbase of the Wrangler Unlimited is 116 and the track width is 61.9. What does this mean for the potential buyer? Considering the H3s are cheaper on the used market than the Jeep, it means you are getting near Rubicon performance for a significantly cheaper price. Let's look under the truck and see if that comparison holds up. Now we are looking underneath the rear of the vehicle and some of you may recognize that differential cover. Yes, that is a Dana 44. The stock inline 5H3s are equipped with 455 gears from the factory, while the V8 Alphas have 410s. The axle is suspended by leaf springs in the rear. I would have preferred a coil sprung suspension, but this is a carryover for being based on the Colorado platform. Up front, you have a torsion bar independent front suspension, a trademark of Chevy, which will give you higher speed off road and on road performance than a solid front axle of that of the Jeep at the expense of flexibility and some durability. What you notice up front is that the front differential is also a Dana 44. In most H3s this cover is aluminum to save weight, but the Adventure package is equipped with a cast iron case to improve durability as the aluminum casing has been known to flex in severe off-road situations. The best part of the drivetrain is arguably the Borg Warner chain-driven full-time four-wheel drive transfer case. This gives you essentially all-wheel drive in high range for everyday driving with the ability to lock the center differential in both high and low range for technical terrain. Another nice feature is that every trim package of the Hummer H3 comes with full skid plates, including a nice aluminum front skid which is typically an option on vehicles like the Toyota Tacoma and lower spec Jeeps. These accessory steps aren't going to help you on the trail, but you've got frame mounting for the slider, which is very good. I'd like to point out the long wheelbase here. What Hummer likes to do with this wheelbase is they added a lot of room for a vehicle this size for the rear passengers. So you have nice access into the rear compartment. You got a grab handle right here, nice leather right there. I've got plenty of room in the back. My head kind of bumps on the headliner a little bit. Leather is very comfortable. Got plenty of room for car seats. We have three kids in the back. Cup holder, a lot of them break. This one's broken right here, but at least we have the cup holder. The only dome lights you've got is right there because of the sunroof. This is the rear storage compartment, Hummer H3, with a Dometic 35 CFX fridge. You can see it's on, I just plugged it in. Vehicle is off, so you have power on the stock battery to run the fridge in low mode, but it's very marginal. Water bottle and windshield washer bottle, kind of showing you how much room you have here, which honestly isn't very much. Let's take a look at this power real quick. Low, let's go to medium. So far it's running in the medium. Oh, there it is, it kicked off on the medium. Put the power plug is right there. You have really nice storage right there where we have our sand flag, the American flag that we use at Sand Hollow and our first aid kit. In the back where the spare tire is, you have another storage where your jack is. We have the tools for changing the tire. That's nice, but honestly, you're talking maybe two, maybe three wolf pack boxes at the most in the back right here, the Nobetic fridge, and that's it. 
which brings us to the side of the vehicle which has a nice flat roof line right here for storing stuff on the roof but that gets rid of the nice low center of gravity look take a look at the passenger side leather seat very very nice here's your controls for the automatic lumbar heated seat control there's a rocker right there we mounted our CB radio on the side right here. It works well for us. And as you notice, I get in the passenger side. It's down and out of the way. One thing about these side seats is you'll notice this frame is kind of bent out. They start to wear here, which is typical of a Chevy and most leather vehicles. But when you sit in here and you slide out, this trim pushes down and has been noted to hit the heater button and will lock on high so you'll get in in the summer, sit down, turn on your vehicle, and you will have a very hot seat. Take a look now down here where the gear shift is. Nice good feel to it. Two cup holders here. The downside is, is off-roading you want to get down to first gear. Well that is actually third. Second is right there that second and if you want to lock it into first gear low range that's first so essentially if you're off-roading yeah you've got one cup holder glove box very nice you've got your small padded one here where we use our record book then you got a deep one right there okay doing the glove test the standard is the FJ Cruiser. If you've seen that, it was designed for gloves. So let's see how the controls are. Cruise control, wiper stock, cruise control, very easy, nice big buttons. The um, headlight, they're automatic, but the manual control, override controls are good. Window buttons are a little bit tight for these gloves. Obviously, the emergency flashers is perfect. Four-wheel drive control, nice, nice feedback. Climate controls. Honestly, for the climate control and the glove test, I would say the H3 is the standard over the FJ Cruiser. The FJ Cruiser really doesn't have the feedback, the tactile feedback that I really like compared to this Hummer H3. Now, where the Hummer H3 shifter obviously works good, where the Hummer H3 falls apart and where a lot of vehicles fall apart is the radio. And that's where the FJ Cruiser really shines because it's got a custom radio. The volume and the channel adjustment the power button, all are fine. Even the CD switching, it starts to fall apart there. Your seat for the XM radio, like that's going to work, and this is just fair. The vents, um, not quite so good. Um, the Jeep Wrangler is actually really, really good on the glove test as far as the air conditioning vents are concerned. This one, um, not quite as good. Overall, this is very good layout compared to a typical vehicle as far as the glove test is concerned. Um, I really like it. It's got good seating position. This is when GM started really to upgrade their materials compared to the first generation Hummer H2. It's still kind of a harder plastic, but um, much better than what they were usually running. you got your four-wheel drive controls here, full-time four-wheel drive high full-time four-wheel drive with the center differential lock, which you'd use off-road, and the four low. And if you have the adventure package with the four to one transfer case and the rear differential locker, you'll have the button right there. That's how you tell if you have that. Again, nice meaty leather steering wheel, good feel, typical Hummer cruise control. Gauge cluster is nice, very easy to read. The thing that gets me for being billed as a luxury vehicle is the button here has odometer and trip. Odometer and trip. And that's about all the option you've got. That rear wiper, two cigarette lighters, and that's pretty much your cockpit. Very, very functional. One of the best features of the Hummer H3 is the sunroof. I can't stress that enough. You guys almost need to sit in one to believe it. And I think that's due to the fact the, the windshield is vertical and it's so far ahead they could bring the sunroof forward so when you've got it we'll open it right now 
usually when I'm in a vehicle and I'm a bigger person, even I have to slide back, but still the sunroof's right here. I can't see anything. In this sunroof, I can see the trees. A good compromise between having a hard top insulated vehicle and a removable top. And it's just really, really nice. Yeah, I'm cruising our local Forest Service road in four high lock right now. This thing is really nice. It's really comfortable. It eats up these Forest Service roads. Again, that front torsion bar suspension does really good in this kind of terrain. The higher speed stuff. The back end, still a little jittery as you'd expect from a leaf sprung, longer wheelbase truck like vehicle. But all in all, it does this work very, very well. Okay, we're going to put it in neutral now, put it in four low lock. Here is probably going to be a deal breaker for some. It is, I find it quite annoying, and Chevy does this on every Chevy four wheel drive I've ridden, is the shift from first low to second it takes high RPMs, and then it just jerks you forward. You get back out here and try it again. Chevy can really learn from Toyota and Land Rover, even Jeep, how to throttle map. Again, I'm up to 3,000 RPM, and there's the thud. Let's get in the next gear. Once you're in second gear, it's quite nice. That Borg Warner transfer case, you can hear it whine. I've asked in the forums, how do you fix that one to two shift? And being in four low is just really uncomfortable. And the consensus I get is, is well, don't be in four low for very long. Shift into four high. And you know, on some trails, Moab, Colorado descents, you're in four low all the time. And to me, that's unacceptable. Oh, there's the thud. While we were in Sand Hollow, we got that thud every time, in and out. And it just got old. It really ruins the fun of this vehicle in four low. It really does. As fun as the Hummer H3 is in four high, it is kind of annoying in four low. I can't imagine what it would be like with the four to one transfer case with all that low gearing. You really would be in four high all the time. So where does the H3 fit in the off-road vehicle lineup? If you're going to build a hardcore rock crawler, it can be done with the Hummer H3, but a better starting point is still going to be the Jeep Wrangler, thanks to its aftermarket support and solid front axle. If you are building an Overlander, it's tough to beat the Toyota 4Runner, thanks to improved rear storage capacity and again, aftermarket support. The H3 can be utilized in this manner, but you'll be putting heavy loads on the roof, which compromises performance and safety. If you have to have an H3 and want to do extensive backcountry travel, look for the Hummer H3T, which is the truck version. The lack of storage and annoying 1-2 to shift and subsequent transfer case wine and 4 low were the primary reasons we sold the H3 in favor of an LX470, Lexus's 100 series Land Cruiser. The lack of space in the rear of the H3 made it difficult to carry our food plus my filming equipment on day trips, let alone trying to utilize it for multiple day adventures. Where the Hummer H3 really shines is for those who want a capable daily driver that can do up to 6 or mild 7 rated trails with very little modifications, especially in a late model Alpha Adventure package with V8, 410 gears, 4 to 1 transfer case, and front and rear lockers. It's there that the Hummer H3 really shines, and if a daily driver weekend backcountry explorer is what you're looking for, you should take a look at the Hummer H3. They are truly a bargain considering the going rate for the H3 in today's market.